for more great videos and learning tutorials, or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com. Well, welcome back to our tutorial series on creating and working with table-based layouts in Dreamweaver CS5. In the first video, we talked about two table properties, uh, padding and spacing, that are very important to you. And in the last video, we talked about uh, how to merge and split cells. We talked about why not to do that. In this video, we're going to talk about how to nest tables inside of other tables to create the kind of layouts that we might uh, like. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and click on my page. And what I want to do is create a very simple layout, one that allows me to have the banner up top, maybe use some space for um, the name of the company over to the left, and a space for the logo of the company over to the right. I'm going to want a middle area that um, is going to have three different columns inside of it. A left-hand navigation area, a center content area, and sort of a right-hand call-out or side note area. And then finally, I'm going to want a footer down at the bottom. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and go to Insert and Table. And what I want is three rows and one column. I'm going to have three long rows, and I'm going to say my layout is only going to be 800 pixels wide. And I'm going to set both the border, padding, and spacing, all three of those, to zero. And you'll see why in just a moment. I'll click OK, and there is my basic layout table. Now, I said I wanted to be able to put the name over here to the left, and the logo for our company, or a tagline for our company, over to the right. And I'm going to want the name left-hand indented, and the tagline right-hand indented. So to do that, before we saw how we could split the cell, but we saw that there were quite a bit of um, uh, problems with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a second table, or nest a table inside of this cell in the table. And to do that, I'm simply going to go ahead and right-click on that cell, select Table, and, oh, no, sorry, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to Insert, Table. And I choose what my table is going to look like. In this case, the table is just going to have one row, but it's going to have two columns. It's going to take up 100%. Now, that's not 100% of the entire screen space. It's going to be 100% of whatever the containing cell is. So since the outer table is 800 pixels wide, setting this for 100% will automatically make that table 800 pixels wide. But then if I change my table, let's say I make my, my outer constraining table, instead of it being 800 pixels, let's say I make it 1,000, that will automatically expand without me having to go and change that everywhere. I'm going to leave border alone at zero, but I'm going to want to add some padding on here. I'm actually going to add 15 pixels of padding, and I don't want any spacing on this table. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And now you're going to see I actually nested a table inside of this table. And if I right click, choose table, and then select table, you'll even see I can select that table within that cell. The only way of really telling whether that's a merged or a split cell is actually to click on it. And visually, you can tell this tool tip. Or you can go into code view, and you can see um, that a table has been nested inside of a table cell. I'll come back here to design view. And now I can go ahead and enter the company name here. I'm just putting in placeholder text. And then I can go ahead and do the company logo right there. And I can go ahead and move this on around, position it wherever I want. Now, this center section here is going to have my navigation, my main content area, and then a right-hand sidebar. So again, I'm going to click in that middle cell, go to Insert, and Table. And this time, it's going to again be one row, but it's going to be three columns. 
And again, I'm going to choose 100% and 15 pixels of padding. That way my text will never be pushed right up against each other. Now, if you watch the preceding video when we talked about merging and splitting cells, you'll remember when I split this middle row, it automatically lined up the split in the cell above it. But here, since this is a table inside of a cell, there's no connection between the rows here, or the column breaks here, and the column breaks in the cell above it. So I can move this and position this you know, anywhere I want to at all without having to worry about affecting any of the other columns that I may have set up. And then I could nest a table down here in the bottom for the footer if I wanted to. And let's say I want, uh, um, now let's just, we'll just go ahead and leave that alone right now. So you can see very easily how to set up a layout table using Dreamweaver. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of formatting here. I'm going to go ahead and click in that cell there. and I'm going to change the background color of the top to something like a light blue. I'll maybe click my prism here and um, choose a blue here and go ahead and drag that up and there's sort of a medium blue color there. I can do the same thing in this cell. Only instead of having to find that same color on my color prism, what I can do is I can simply click the background color. And you see I've got that eyedropper tool. And that will allow me to choose a color just by clicking on it and apply it. And then this is going to be my navigation area over here. So maybe I change the background color of that to like a light gray. I can change my footer to a different color. So it's light yellow or green there. I can change this sidebar's color. You know, something different. Oh, that's not very different from the bottom one. There we go. I'm just arbitrarily picking colors there. Then they don't necessarily look good. And then I can go ahead and do main content here. Enter. Uh, more content. Enter, more, more, more. And you're going to see one property of the tables right now, and that's the alignment property. By default, the alignment property in most browsers will align table contents to the left if it's aligning it horizontally, and it will center it if it's aligning it vertically. So if I want these cells here to have their content float to the top, what I need to do is I need to click there and I need to change the vertical property here to top. And actually I think that drop down is going off of the video screen here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my properties panel right up here at the top so you can see that a little bit better. And what I'm going to, actually I'll move it right down here. And then I'm going to change the vertical property to top. And see how nav jumps up? I'll do the same thing here, right side. I'll change the vertical property to top. And it jumps up here to the top. I'll also want to change the property here in the center area. Because you can see, again, it's just left alone at default. That means if my, let's say on a few pages, my navigation goes down farther than my content, watch what happens. And you'll see that the content is aligned in the center or in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the vertical property there to top to always make sure that that fl content floats to the top. Also, if you're interested in seeing the high definition 1280 by 720 videos, please go to createthenet.com. When we upload these videos to video sharing services, they always shrink the video size down and decrease the quality so they come out a little bit fuzzy. If you go to the uh, website, you can see the full resolution versions of these videos.